uh, we're starting now again and um, we're going to go through the questions to reveal what we do when we do deliverance uh, and inner healing for people okay so um, first question here why are th these openings to inner hearts and uh, evil spirit so why does complain to God will, will uh, be an opening? Because when we complain to God, then, we are, then our heart is not open to God. When we complain to God, our heart will be open to the devil. So it will open the, uh, will be an opening to inner hurts. It will be more inner hurts. But many people who, <coughs> who suffer from, um, from inner hurts, they, very often they complain a lot and so it always go together and what happens is they will have more more inner hurts <coughs> and then uh, negative thinking and emotions uh, all this will create negative image inside and these people usually they're very negative about everything they're unhappy about everything and then the devil can come into their life and despise of oneself they say I'm useless and then uh, these people will have problem to the evil spirit and inner hearts. So we, we want to, uh, in our messages, we want to help people to be positive about God, about ourselves, even when we face difficulties. God is responsible for our life, that we want to take care of different problems in our life so that we are positive. Or any kind of sin, sins because the devil uh, hold on to sins or unforgiveness, and then uh, Worship or connection with demons will also will uh, bring in uh, actually very strong demonic work. Okay, and um, and also uh, when we touch dead people too. Now because or of sick people who are not Christians, so we have to be careful because when people are very sick, when they are dying or when they're dead, the evil spirit are still on them because the evil spirit want to take the soul from people I have uh, I've known someone who have uh, you know he played with motorbikes with some friends and then uh, some of them had an accident and killed instantly and this friend of mine at that time he did not know me yet it was nine years before he knew me he touched the dead body immediately he had a vision of the devil uh, laughing and then uh, he uh, fainted and then at that night when he he saw the image of the devil so it's um, because when people die and they don't follow Jesus then the soul is taken by the devil so when people touch them at that point they have to pray to protect themselves if not demons can go into uh, someone I know another person who and her sister were drunk at the same time but this person lived but the sister died and after that she has a lot of demons on her because when the sister died the demons went uh, to get the soul of the sister and then so the souls also went I mean the spirit evil spirit also get onto this uh, young girl and then and then later in life she has a lot of attack from evil spirit so we want to, uh, when we are in contact with dead people, we want to keep praying and God can protect us. We don't have to be afraid, but we have to be aware of that, that they have evil spirit on them. Okay, number two, why all people need some degree of inner healing and deliverance? Because all people have some hurt feeling, some negative feeling, some unhappy experiences and sins. And so all this need inner healing and deliverance. Uh, a lot of people they can do it themselves when they come close to the Lord when they love God and obey God and uh, this evil spirit will also go away uh, but if people don't take care of their life then the evil spirit can attack why are in healing and deliverance not just praying because if the person don't take care of their uh, emotions and their interpersonal relationships and their sin then the evil spirit will linger and they won't go away okay and then steps of inner healing first step is 
uh, help the person to be accepted and comforted by a counselor and by God. Why is it important for a person going through inner healing to feel accepted and comforted by a counselor and by God? Because when a person is uh, uh, is being hurt, that uh, we as living people around them have the first uh, opportunity to comfort them, to accept them. So we want to to be comforting to them instead of uh, accusing them. So we want to bring comfort and acceptance and listen to them. And how do we accept his feelings? We accept that even though he might have done something wrong, but his feelings at that time is real. That he's unhappy, that he's hurt, that he's angry is real. That is something we want to accept even when he's angry. We want to accept that and gradually help the person to overcome that feelings. And how do we name his feelings? So we observe the person and hear what they say and then uh, if he, what he says is it shows that he is anger or sad we can say oh so are you angry now we can ask that's the safest way Do you feel sad uh, uh, but you know something we can know for sure is usually unhappy generally generally unhappy is a t uh, description that it will fit most situations so you are unhappy about it it will be uh, it will fit most situations but sometimes other feelings might not be true like anger sometimes people are not angry even though we might think in a situation we will be angry but we we don't say that oh you must be angry because people might feel angry that we say that he is angry and how do we feel his feelings that that we imagine that if we were him that how would we feel and then we can name his feelings uh, and feel the feeling and then they will feel accepted by us if we can say oh I can feel your anger I can feel your sadness number five how do we respond to his feelings if he's sad then we say oh you must be very sad makes you feel bad right and uh, uh, how does it affect you can you sleep well and that must be difficult for you so we name the situation and we agree with them that it must be unhappy for them so we name that feeling and name how it affects and find out how it affects the person so we uh, basically let the person talk about his feelings in that situation to to uh, to show that we accept the person we want to hear about him we want to uh, support him why is it important for a person to believe in God's love and his self-worth? Uh, so the next step is to believe in God's love and his self-worth. Because when he believes in God's love, then he, then he uh, realizes there is hope. And his self-worth, that he is, uh, he is worthy, he is, he, he has, uh, uh, he is important. Then there is value of trying to, uh, trying to help him. And he feels there is hope. There is hope that because he has value and Isaiah 49 15 that God will not forget us like a woman will not forget the baby in what mentality does God remember us God remember us some people think God remembers us like a police officer that's not how he remembers us even though we might have sinned a lot God still remember us in a very loving way he wants to forgive us he cares about us. He understands all people suffer. He understands all people are under the influence of sin. So he knows that everyone is suffering and he cares about us. He doesn't, he doesn't condemn us when he thinks about us. Does God have every blessing in his hand? Yes, he has. He wants to bless us. If he remembers us, what will he do for those who love him? He will, uh, what he will do is he will prepare for things that prepare for us things that we can never imagine that we never could imagine that he will prepare these blessings for us so he has great creativity and ability so Psalm 139 16 to 17 that all the days of our life has been written in this book so what does this verse tell us about our self-worth that we are important that God has written our life in heaven if we follow God and love God and obey God this all this will come true 
if we don't obey, then we won't uh, enter the perfect will of God. And if we enter the perfect will of God, our whole life will go better and better, always go better and better. Why do many people don't believe in their self-worth? Because many people deny their self-worth. They say, you know, many people say to them, you're useless, I don't like you, uh, you always uh, doing things wrong, you never do things right. So they have been hurt by people many times, so they don't believe that they are worthy. How do you, we lift up people's sense of self-worth? We let them know God loves you, you're important, and tell them uh, things that they are good in, that they have loved God, they have followed God, they have seek God's help, and this uh, make them, uh, that would give them self-worth too. When they love God, they seek God's help. So whatever they do right according to God's standard, then they, uh, that will uh, raise their, uh, their self-worth. But the self, the first self-worth is that they are important inside of God. They are a child of God. That's the first self-worth. Okay, and then next step, believing that people cannot take away our blessings and God can store what we lost. So when we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. What does God seeking God's kingdom and righteousness mean? Seeking God's kingdom means seeking the kingdom of grace. We want more people saved. We want more people enter the kingdom of God. And also, God's rulership. We want God to be ruling our hearts. So we want Jesus to because where he rules is his kingdom. We want him to rule our heart, rule our family, rule our church and everything we do. And righteousness is what, how we obey God. So we want to seek God's righteousness. We want to first have the righteousness of Jesus Christ covering us. And then we want to obey God to have this righteousness. If we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, can anyone or Satan take away God's blessing from us? If we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, God will pour a blessing onto us. Nobody can steal those things. So we don't have to worry about people stealing good things from us. And even if they have stolen something, God will give us back these things. Okay, and then believing that God cannot take away our blessings. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. So uh, that God will prepare for those who love Him things we cannot imagine. So when we love God, can anyone or Satan take away blessings from us? Nobody can. Satan cannot. If we love God, nobody can take away the good things uh, from us. So we always believe, uh, I, God is my bless, uh, the source of my blessings. If I hold on to God, I love God, I obey God, then I'll be blessed by God forever. Nobody can take away those things. So we don't have to fear anything. And we, the source of blessing is from God. I've seen so many people, they always look for evangelists, always look for the help from evangelists instead of looking for the help from God. God is the one who can give us all the good things. Now, it's not wrong to ask for evangelists to help us, but the main source is God, so we want to hold on to God. Four, being comforted by God during prayer. So God is a God who heals the brokenhearted and comfort those who mourn. And He gives us the oil of uh, gladness uh, instead of mourning. So what will the Holy Spirit do to our broken spirit? He will bring healing to us, bring comfort. The more we come to God, Oh Lord, we trust in You, we worship You, we adore You, we like You. The more we like God, the more we'll be healed. So every day we spend time loving God and at the same time declare that God is loving us and blessing us. This prayer, interactive prayer that I have taught, that when we pray we know that God always likes us and always responds so we can say, when I love God, God is very happy, God is blessing me, God is pouring His blessing upon us, God is protecting me. So then uh, the more we pray like this, the more joyful we will be. How can we let the Holy Spirit heal us and comfort us? That we, we hold on to God and say, I need you, I need you. And believe His promises that He will pour His blessing upon us. So we hold on to His promises and we believe. Right now God is blessing me and whenever we experience any peace and joy, we say, God, thank you, you're blessing me right now. You are giving me peace and joy right now, you're blessing me. So any time that we experience any good things, we say, God, you're blessing me, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Do we pray with our mind or with our soul and spirit and get to get healing? It's most important with the soul and spirit, not just the mind. Then just saying, God heal me. Some people say, I ask God to help heal me, but I never experienced the healing. We want to love God. Oh Jesus, you're so wonderful. I love you and you're loving me. Thank you, you're loving me. And we can sing songs from our heart. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. So we enjoy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That way we'll get more healing. Okay, and uh, so it's a whole person from the whole spirit. We love God and we learn to also like God. God, you're so wonderful. I like you. I like you. I like you. The more we delight in God, the more God will bless us. So I hope we all learn to delight in God and tell people about the good things of God so everyone will delight in God. Everyone say, God is so wonderful. I like God. I love God. I like God and enjoy God. God is so wonderful. Hallelujah. Okay. Number three. Three, was Jesus with us even before we became a Christian? Yes, he was with us all the time, but he could not bless us because we did not have uh, the salvation of Jesus yet. Uh, what does the omnipresence of God mean? Omnipresence means he's present everywhere, even with non-Christians, he's present everywhere. And he wants to bless us. He wants to bless all people, but many people reject him. Before we became a Christian, did God already want to save us, heal us, and raise us up? Yes, He already wanted to do that. But many people did not, uh, are not open to God, and so they closed their heart to God. Because all people in the heart will think of God. Think, is there a God? Is there a God? But there are many people who reject that right away. And many people want their own way. They want to, you know, they meditate, they want to seek their own God instead of wanting a holy God. Many people reject Jesus because Jesus wants people to repent and, f and live a holy life. And most religions you can do anything you want. Can we ask Jesus what he wanted to say to us when we were hurting? So when Jesus was looking at us when we were hurting, did he have feelings toward us? Yes, he does. Now this uh, because the Bible says that all the days of our life before one of them came to be, He already wrote them in heaven. And how precious are His thoughts. So He already has wonderful thoughts toward us. And His thoughts will come into reality with, when His plan, you know, come true in our life, uh, step by step. But many people do not accept Jesus, so they did not get this plan. But when we accept Jesus, this plan came true. So. He already wanted to heal us. He wanted to heal us. So we can ask Him when we were hurting, did, what did you want to do to us? How, was, how were you feeling at that time when I was hurting? And, and Jesus would give thoughts to us. Or we can believe from the Bible that He already cared about us. He wants to, to heal us. He wants to comfort us. Can we believe that Jesus wanted to say something encouraging to us? even when we were hurting. Yes, he wanted to say that. Now, I know two persons <coughs> who pray to God <coughs> um, a lot, and then they went to heaven. <coughs> and then when they went to heaven, they, they saw the Book of Life. And in the Book of Life, they saw their life before that they were suffering. They saw it in a video form. And then they saw the handwriting of God next to it. And God was writing I, I was hurt when he was hurt. I feel unhappy when he was unhappy. I, I wanted to do something for him. And, uh, and, one, and God said to one person in the book of life, I wish I could take, him, take her to heaven now, but if I take her to heaven, her plan, my plan for her life will not come true. I wish he, she can leave the world and then she can have my joy. So God really wanted to comfort us even before we knew Him. Because He always is a loving God. Okay, as a more mature Christian, what encouraging words can we say to the old time me? We can say to them, oh, one time, in, uh, now, you know, in due time you became me. 
like I am. I'm, I've grown up. I'm, I'm more mature. So you are growing up and God is bringing healing to you so you can be healed. So we can say to our old self, you can be healed. God wants to heal you and you're being healed more and more. So we don't have to hold on to the hurts in the past. As a person doing inner healing for another person, what can we say to a person to help him have inner healing? We can say, God cares about you, God cares about this person, God wants to bring healing, God wants to comfort this person, God wants to uh, comfort us and is with us right now. Thank you, Jesus. So we can uh, speak uh, uh, for Jesus, speak for Jesus, say things that Jesus would say to him. Okay, letting go of passwords, Philippians 3.13. But one thing I do, forgetting th those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Why is it important to forget the past? Because the past hurts, it's not going to do anything good for us. So it's good to, to forget about that, them and take care of them. Even though some people hurt us, we can say, well, it doesn't matter if someone hurt me. It, uh, he's not continuing. He doesn't continue to hurt me now. I can let go of the past hurts. I can say God gives me back all the blessings so I can let go. And uh, then we can be healed. If not, we will continue to be hurt. How to forget the past hurts? We'll say, well, what happened already happened. It cannot be changed. So this is what happened in the past. I have two choices. I can let it continue to hurt me. Or I can let it go. So what do you want to do? You want to be, con to, to be hurt by it continually. If we hold on to it, then it will hurt us continually. And we can say, it's okay to let go, to so forget about it. Because God has given me new blessings every day. Every day I have new blessings. As I love God and praise God, God give me more things. So all the things in the past, I can forget about it and God can give me new things. So we can say, those things are already history. I don't have to hold on to those things. I can hold on to the blessings of God that God has prepared for me now. So whatever way we can help ourselves, we can do it. Uh, sometimes we can say, well, the person has been hurt by many people, so he continues to hurt me, but I don't have to remember how he hurts me. He always hurt people. I don't have to think about that. I can think about maybe the good things he has done. I can think about what God has done for me. Okay, how to reach forward to the things ahead? You think about God has a wonderful plan. If I love him and obey him, this plan will come true. So I slide forward to the plan of God in ahead of me and not to think about the hurts in the past. How can we help the person to have a different way to look uh, at the past hurts. So we can say to the person, uh, when you look at a past hurts, does it help you? Did it help you? When you have been thinking about these past hurts, did it help you? Did it change anything? Does it make you more miserable? Or does it make you more happy? If it makes you more miserable, do you want to be joyful? Do you want to be happy? Do you want your life to go better? If you want your life to go better, can we forget? Now, even though He has stolen things from, from us, but God can give those things back to us. Even though it's unfair, but it's also unfair for Jesus to die for us who are sinners and give us all blessings. So even though it's unfair, we can let go. Many people say it's unfair, so they cannot let go. Okay, and then uh, how to reach... Uh, Number three, when he can let go of anything in the past, what can we do to encourage him? When he can let go of anything, he can let go of something, and we we'll say, wow, you're doing great, you're doing great. You'd be doing better and better, and then you can forget about the past, and you can be joyful, and you can be happy again. I can see that you have a smile. You're happier now. Oh, thank God you are, you are doing better. So we want, always want to say encouraging things to people. Now, some people say, I cannot say encouraging things to people. I can only accuse people. That's because we accuse ourselves. Many, many people, even pastors, they all, always just accuse people, say, you didn't obey God, you didn't follow God, you're, you're not loving God. So many people just accuse people instead of appreciating people, applauding people, say, you've improved, you're doing great. 
You know, as pastor, we can tell people, wow, you have prayed to God, you have loved God, you have followed God. I can see that you worship wholeheartedly. That's wonderful, and God likes it, and I like it. And we are growing, we are growing. This way, people are encouraged. Now, Jesus encourages us. He, he said that when you give a cup of cold water in my name, I will, you will not lose your reward. That's encouraging. So Jesus always encouraging people. And he said, when you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So he can say, you know, all the things I've done, you will do too, and even greater things you do. So Jesus is encouraging people. So we want to learn from Jesus to encourage people. The more we encourage ourselves and look at the good things of God, the more we appreciate God, the more we, we, we can encourage people. Okay, learning to have compassion on people hurt hurt us and be willing to bless us and forgive us. So how do we know that people who have hurt us have been hurt by people many times? Because the fact that they are angry with people because they have not been loved by people much and so they have a lot of anger. So they have been hurt by people. Are they miserable in that sense? Yes, they are. So the more miserable than we are. How can we have compassion on them? We think about the suffering and then we say the suffering and we have Jesus and I want to bless them, I want to forgive them. Three, what are some hindrances to forgiving them? Sometimes people say it's unfair, I want to pay back, I want him to pay back, I want to punish him, so these are hindrances to, to forgiveness. Or we say, uh, I, I've been, I hurt so badly, I cannot let go, uh, uh, it's so many years I suffer so much, so much, so much, so they just look at the suffering, then they cannot forgive. But we say, it's enough. I've suffered enough. I want to let go. I don't want to let, let this thing uh, torture me anymore. So we want to learn to say, well, the suffering is in the past. I want to let go now. And even if we improve a little bit, I can rejoice in the Lord. I can forget a little, little bit. I can put down the suffering that already improved. Then we can rejoice. So we, we can do it ourselves. First, we do it ourselves. And then we can teach people. You know, for myself, I've done it many times for myself. So I, I learned to do it by doing it to myself. I want to live a free, joyful life. Now, why did I have the motivation? One reason is, after when I experienced the Holy Spirit, I felt great love fill my heart. I said, wow, this is wonderful. I want to enjoy this love forever. And I want to be able to bless people. So I say, anything that blocks my blessing, I want to stop it. I don't want to let anyone affect me. I want to live in joy. So that motivates me to continue to stay in joy so that I'm not hurt by anyone. Okay, number... Um, so how can we overcome these hindrances? The way to overcome is to look at the blessings of God and look at how precious we are when we follow God and we have a wonderful plan that God has planned for us. So, uh, so we don't want to think about the, the bad things in the past. What the result if we forgive? If we forgive, we are free, we are joyful, and God forgives us, and our whole life will go better and better. Finding a way to re relate to the people who hurt us. Why should we learn to relate to the people who hurt us before? Because we want to have a full forgiveness. We want to have a full freedom. So when we see these people, we want to bless them. We want to relate to them in a healthy way. And what are some hindrances? Some hindrances are in our heart. We say it's unfair. We say that person deserves to be punished. But the more we think this way, the more we want to revenge, the more we'll lose. So we have to convince ourselves. Uh, the more we want to revenge, we want, but the more we complain, the more we will suffer. Number three, should we be nice to everyone? Yes, everyone. Do we have to be close friends with people who have hurt us. We don't have to be close friends with them. We can be nice to them. We treat them nicely. But we don't have to be close friends. But if they one day, they, they show that they are improving, they are changing, they are trusting in God, then we can be close friends with them. It's not because of the past that they, we won't, don't want to be close friends with them. But if they continue to be angry, yelling at people, we don't have, want to be close friends. We don't have to be close friends with people who are, you know, uncontrollable, who is angry, who always want to hurt people, we don't have to be close friends with them. How do we choose our friends? We choose our friends, people who love God, people who, who uh, want to bless people, people who are following the Bible. 
what is the difference between choosing our friends and being nice to everyone? Now, to everyone, we're nice. We love them. We care about them. We help them. But to be a friend is someone we can trust. We can tell them our problems, our burdens, our secrets. Those are our friends. We don't. We don't need many many friends. We need a few very good friends, and that's most important. And most uh, is uh, the best is that we. Have our spouse as our best friend that we can tell our spouse about everything that happened to us that we can share our life together and face problems together. So it's very important to build up marriage because uh, it's healthier that way, and it's very dangerous to have opposite sex uh, close friends uh, when we are married and then we have close. Friendship with uh, an opposite sex person is very dangerous, and it can lead to more and more sin and dependence. Dependence already is a problem. When we experience peace and healing in the Lord, so we love because He first loves us. So does God love us before we love Him? Yes, God loves us first. Does He love to have a close relationship with us? Yes, He wants to. So whenever we pray, we say, "God wants to have a close relationship with me," and He's very happy. I want Him. So every time I, I I want God, I need God, I hold on to God. God is very happy. So I hope we all have this confidence. Every time I come to God, I can be very happy because God is happy with me. So I hope we hold on to these promises instead of holding to onto teachings like. Generation curse. This would just cause people to fear. We want to hold on to promises of God's love and blessings. So draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. When we come to God, is He happy to come close to us? He's always happy. Is it hard to build a strong relationship with God? No, it's not hard. If we want to, we can always build a strong relationship with God. We can just say to God all day long, "You're wonderful. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you." Even when we sin, when we repent, God is very happy. And whenever we obey Him, He's very happy. Whenever we love Him, He's very happy. But some people just look at the sins and say, "I've sinned. I've sinned." And God looks at my sin. When we have this sin, we ask God to forgive us, and He's very happy. How do we build a strong relationship with God, and how will that help us to have inner healing? We build up the close relationship by trusting in God, reading the Bible, and praying to Him, and believing every promise in the Bible, and hold on to the promises, and love God, and delight in God, and obey Him, and serve Him, and He's very happy. And it will help us to have inner healing because His presence will be stronger and stronger. That that will peace will come to our soul. Please explain prayer of grace, prayer of worship, and interactive prayer. So I have taught this before. Prayer of grace is declaring God's blessing to us. He is loving us. He is He's blessing us. He is caring for us. And then prayer of worship is from us to God. I worship you. I love you. I adore you. Interactive prayer is when we, whenever we pray, we believe that God is very happy and God is responding and blessing me now. Whenever we pray, we say God is blessing me now. God is responding to me now. Nine, bring healing to oneself in prayer. So,、uh, how will a strong daily relationship with God and handling problems in our life help us、uh, in inner healing? So, if we have a strong relationship with God and take care of problems, then、uh, we'll have more and more healing. Okay, we will go faster、uh, on some of this. Uh, we, when we think of someone who has hurt us, how can we handle that in our heart? We can just say, "Let go." It's already in the past. We can let go. When we feel inferior, how can we handle that in our heart? We say, "God loves me. God wants to raise me up, and I have improved already. When I trust in Jesus, I have improved already. So I can be happy about myself. I'm getting better. I'm not inferior." When we feel emotional, how can we handle that in our heart? And we say, well, emotion, em,、uh, negative emotion is going to hurt me, and I can be joyful in the Lord. I can rejoice in the Lord. I can praise the Lord. I can count His blessings. Okay, ten. Find out if a person has been bothered by evil spirit. Why can evil、uh, demons affect a person more when he has low resistance? Because he now when he's praying, then he has strong resistance. Uh, when he's strong and healthy, he has more resistance. But when he's sick, when he's emotional, when he's sinning, when he's sleeping, then he uh, uh, 
evil spirit can come to bother him more. So many people say, oh, I had bad dreams. I have evil spirit coming to me in my dreams. Now, if we have a very strong relationship with God, even when we're sleeping, evil spirit cannot come to us. But when Christians, they are moderately healthy, but not very strong. Evil spirit can still come to attack them, uh, bother them in their sleep. How can we tell the difference? Uh, how can we tell the difference between psychiatric problem and demonic possession? When we pray for people and to drive out demons or just come close to Lord, the Lord and then he has some resistance or signs of evil spirit. It shows that he has evil spirit inside him. Uh, if we pray for him and no demons at all but he is out of control and always uh, negative emotionally then he is uh, maybe he has an emotional problem or psychiatric problem. Why are connections or ceremonies with evil spirit serious? Because that gives the evil spirit a license to attack the person so we don't want to have that. We want to cut loose from that. Help him to have faith in Jesus' authority. So Jesus, um, so Jesus casts out the evil spirit, shows that the kingdom of God has already come, and uh, and he can enter the strong man's house, the Satan's house, and steal people from Satan. That means he already uh, bound Satan. So we know from that that. Jesus is authority over Satan already, so we don't have to fear Satan. When we love God and obey God, we don't have to fear Satan. But many, many Christians say, oh, Satan is attacking me, oh, uh, there's, there are attacks. They always look at the attacks. They don't look at, when I have God, He will protect me. So we want to look at Jesus. Now, you notice that in the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from all evil. In the Lord's Prayer, it's not praying to evil spirit, go away evil spirit, it's praying to God, deliver us from all evil. So we find that in the Bible, there is no prayer, it's just saying, demons go away, demons go away. Now demons go away is when we drive out demons from people. We don't have to do that all the time. But some people, they pray, they're always fighting the devil. Jesus has already defeated the devil. We just claim that victory. We just believe in Jesus, trust in Jesus, obey Jesus. Then we already have the victory. But some people spend time driving out demons. Rather, we should help people to love God and follow God. And then they have the protection from God. I find that there is no prayer in the Bible. That's people saying, okay, demons go away, go away, go away, go away, go away from us, go away from us. There's no such prayer. Peter, um, um, I mean Paul, he went to different places and he was attacked, he was, I mean you can say he was put in prison, but in the prison he did not say demons go away, go away, he did not do that. So I hope we aim our prayer at God, not at demons. We pray to God not to drive out demons, except when we drive out demons from a person. We pray to God for blessings, for prote protection. And then he has given us authority to trample on serpents and snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be by any means hurt us. So no, nothing can hurt us. We can believe that nothing can hurt us. But people believe that something can hurt them. So it's very strange that that kind of teaching really enter the church and people hold on to that kind of teaching. Okay, cutting off relationship with evil spirit. Why are some people who have cut off relationship with demons still affected by the demons? Because you just do it verbally. They say, I cut off the relationship with the witchcraft, but they still, they don't hate it. We want to hate witchcraft. It's a tool of it, of the enemy. We want to hate that. We want to say no to it. I want, I don't want to think about it. I want to reject it. I want to say no to, all, to it all. What does it mean to re mentally reject and hate all relationship with sin, negative thinking, and then evil spirit? That we hate it, we dislike it, we say no to it, we don't want any part of it. Now, but we don't hate the people. We hate the hatred toward them. We hate the unforgiveness toward them. We hate the negative words that affect us. We want to say no to those. 
why should the prayer to cut off all relationship with sins uh, be done many times because some people don't do it sincerely uh, or from the spirit so we can do it many times for instance some people they have to say I I say no to my negative emotions my anger my frustration I want to say no to those I want to deny those I don't want to live in anger and frustration so we can do that many times so, but we spend more time loving God but still when, when whenever we 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 find that we are being angry we are unforgiving then we want, want to say no to unforgiveness casting out evil spirit why should the person who casts out evil spirit have a strong relationship with God and not living in sin because if he is living in sin he'll be attacked by demons when he's driving out the demons why is it important that the person being delivered have to believe that God loves him and is happy to cast out the evil spirit and God has the power to cast out the, the evil spirit because if he thinks that oh God please help me help me help me if he thinks that God doesn't want to help him then it's hard to drive from the demons but if we believe God wants to drive the demons God wants the demons go out so I have confidence oh yes Jesus wants the demons out hallelujah praise the Lord Jesus wants the demons out demons have to go away in Jesus name demons have to go away then that way it's easier when we believe that God wants the demons out God loves him and God wants the demons out before casting out demons, why is it important to pray to enter to enjoy God's love? Because we want, want to first have a strong presence of God. So enter God's love every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're loving me. I hope we pray more like this. Instead of yelling, oh, demons go away, demons go away. That doesn't build up the relationship with God. That uh, build up the relationship with God is loving God and believing that God loves us but many people just spend all the time driving out demons time driving out demons it's, uh, instead we should live in the presence of God let God do his work okay why should we alternate casting out demons with prayer of loving God because sometimes when you drive out demons for a long time it's tiring and it's not going to work if the person is not open so we want to help the person to enjoy God when he enjoy God he loves God he believes that God is blessing him then he uh, uh, God's presence stronger and then the demons will go away easier why should we check with the person what has their experience so we know what is happening whether he has a blockage he is can he concentrate what is he thinking what is he experiencing does he have evil spirit over a certain part of the body then we lay hand on that part of the body except for opposite sex is better to uh, if opposite sex we can ask the person to lay hand on one part of the body and then we lay hand on top of the hand if there is no woman present so uh, what do we do when they feel comfort or discomfort comfort then we say is the presence of God coming upon you enjoy God more and love God more and thank God more if it feel discomfort then you lay hand on that part how should we be careful when touching the opposite sex we should be very careful in our heart we don't have any lust and we don't allow the person you know we don't want to give opportunity for put that person to have lust so it's better that a uh, opposite sex uh, a same-sex person uh, lay hand on the person and also for catchers too for catchers too is uh, the best is that to have same-sex catchers why is faith in God more important than shouting because it's God who does the work of driving out demons not the shouting shouting by itself doesn't do anything shouting might wake up the person but it's God who drives out the demon why should we sometimes look in the right eye of the person to cast out demons because the demon can see outside and then if he sees uh, uh, a spirit filled Christian then he'll be scared and then he will go out what do we do if there's um, not much progress in casting out the demons then we ask the person about his life does he have anger frustration how is his relationship with God what are blocking his relationship with God and um, what are some of his negative emotions to find out this to help him to handle those before we drive out demons more why is the continual strong relationship of the person with God very important in clearing the demons in him because it's God who drives out demons not the method and what should the person do to maintain a strong relationship with God at first reading the Bible believing the Bible repentance turn away from sin and loving God has spent more time loving God and obeying God and worshiping God and 
serving God and all this will build up a relationship with God and always have the heart I want to please God I want to make God happy I want to do things that make God happy okay about generation curse so uh, about Genesis uh, Exodus 20 verse 5 uh, so visiting the iniquity of the fathers so does it say curse it doesn't say curse uh, it say visiting the iniquity visiting the sin is not cursing so uh, this verse doesn't build up generation curse is the child of a sinful father loves God if a child of a sinful father loves God and keeps his commandment does God visit the iniquity of his father or does God show mercy to him that God promised that he will show mercy so God will show mercy that God will not count the uh, sins of his father only when this son doesn't obey God and he also <coughs> follow the sinful ways of his father then he's affected by these sins and or if the person doesn't believe in Jesus then he suffered the consequence of his father's sin so uh, Deuteronomy 20 28 it talks about the blessings of God when people follow God when people obey God so if a person obeys God will God bless him or visit the iniquity of his father of course God will bless him when he uh, obey God and he, when he loves God Galatians 3 13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us for, for it's written cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree the, did Jesus redeem us from all kinds of curse or just some the Bible says all he has become a curse he has become curse for us he himself became cursed for us so he took all the curse for us uh, so does the Bible teach that curse will come upon Christians who love and obey God never so God never curse Christians who love God Satan has no authority to curse people who love God Satan has no authority 1 Corinthians 2 9 that God will prepare for us things we cannot imagine if we love God so if a person's father is a great sinner and then a person loves God will God visit the iniquity of his father or will God prepare for him blessings that he cannot imagine God will prepare the blessing so the way to take care of any generation curse if there is any is to love God obey God have a beautiful relationship with God and follow God some people say well this is a useful tool in driving out demons I want to say when people face their sins and negative emotions and and uh, thinking and and uh, bad relationship with people unforgiveness frustration all this and when you take care of that is very powerful it's also sure way to drive out demons we don't have to use ways that the Bible doesn't say so uh, sinning will give the devil a foothold so your person continues sin without repentance what will Satan do to him? Satan can attack him. Then Satan can try to curse him. If he doesn't repent at all, Satan will take his soul to hell. If a father rejects God, how will this affect his children if they don't follow Jesus? So if they don't follow Jesus, then they will be affected by the sin of the father. And, and God will visit the iniquity of the father upon the children. Will the children be affected by the Father if they love and obey Jesus? No, they will not be affected by the Father's sin. What will the counsel of generation cause to Christians? It will cause people to have fear and to do things that are not the most helpful way. They will say, oh, cut off the curse of the father and the grandfather, forgive them and, uh, uh, you know, uh, forgive this. Now, forgive the sins, ask God to forgive the sins of the grandfather is fine the Bible does have that but we don't have to do that all day long and uh, rather spending time on loving God and building a good relationship with God and turning away from all sins and and obeying God and loving God and enjoying God that is a sure way of get away from curse so I hope we all follow God's by the way in the Bible don't follow the way of people who pass this concept of generation curse and then they will say okay count all the curses in the generations
how do we cut off any generation curse if there is any if there is any ask God to forgive us and trust in Jesus as our Savior repent of our sins and obey God and love God and have a beautiful relationship with God and then no more curse will come and then 2 Samuel 21 1 about how Saul has mistreated the Gibeonites and then and then uh, seven of his descendants were killed because of that and and when before they were killed there was a famine so uh, if someone says that this passage proves that the sin of the parents can affect the descendants how do we answer them the point is because the descendant of Saul did not follow God if they follow God also they will be blessed by God then the curse will not come to them because they did not follow God so that then uh, so they were punished for the for the sins of Saul and for their own sins how do we dif uh, how are we different from descendants of Saul? We are different from the descendants of Saul because we trust in Jesus as a savior and Jesus took away all the curses, okay? So we stop here now. Is there any question? If you have any questions, please send to me. Okay. Uh, now please uh, the Kenya group leader group is for not for photos the photos please send it to uh, the separate groups because here I just want to see the questions and whether you are ready uh, that kind of things so when you're ready when you're not ready uh, when you have uh, things that I can help if things I cannot help you, cannot, you don't need to send there but then things I can help you can send it there and then also um, uh, that you are ready already send those the pictures don't send there because there will be too many pictures okay God bless you God be with you and God use you well close to the prayer dear Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus because you took all the curse from us you have taken all the curse so we don't have to fear any curse we can enjoy your love we can enjoy your presence we can enjoy every blessing from you you are wonderful God you're wonderful God you are powerful God you're almighty God you love us very much you help us all the time so we can trust in you and we don't have to uh, be afraid of any curse and we don't have to be afraid of any evil spirit we know that we have victory over all evil spirit we know that we have victory over all sins uh, when we trust in you and obey you and follow you we don't have to be uh, we won't be cursed if we trust in Jesus and obey you oh Lord Jesus come to us set us free right now set us free right now give us freedom give us freedom Lord Jesus give us freedom give us joy give us strength oh help us to love you and believe that you have victory over all sins you have victory over all problems you have victory over all evil spirits so we can trust in you and be blessed by you and whatever we have lost to people you will give us back you will bless us in different ways Lord our life will be blessed more blessed by you thank you Jesus we welcome Jesus we welcome you welcome you we love you we adore you we enjoy you we have confidence in you we don't have to fear to fear any curse or evil spirit thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen